Hello, and welcome to 2023. I'm Carrie Freeman, and this is my left ear. My left ear is a liberal, political, and psychic site, and I do um, psychic commentary on the politics and make some predictions. So welcome. This is video 133. It's January 2nd. So here we go. We're, we're launched, all right? Um, what I, when I'm not here, uh, I do private sessions. Um, I do psychic coaching and there is a video on my psychic coaching. It's video number 34 and it's on the landing page right below. And I do therapeutic hypnosis and that also is below and is video number 10 if you want to check that out. I'm also an author. I, um, I've written a book called The Comics Daughter. Many of you have ordered it and liked it. And it's still, I still have some available. So you can check that out on the community page. And um, my new rewritten uh, 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 paperback book, What is Good Evidence, will be out in the spring or before. And uh, I, I put the, um, the new uh, book cover in the community page so you could see it. I like it a lot. Um, so this is for entertainment purposes only, all right? And I do have a Patreon channel, uh, and I will put the um, address of the Patreon channel in my community. And uh, I'm looking for some patrons, so consider that, please. All right, so here we go, for entertainment purposes only. I'm starting today a little different because of good evidence. Now, um, those of you who aren't so familiar with me or my original digital book called Good Evidence, um, good evidence is anything that lights you up. It's anything small or large that lights you up. And it is also any contribution you make to someone else or a, an issue, a charity, uh, or something you receive. So uh, that's like a little um, Cliff Notes version of what good evidence is. So I try to share good evidence when I have it. Sometimes it's about me and sometimes it's about other people. But on the last day of 2022, which was two days ago, I had two experiences that really, um, boy, they really resonated for me as meaningful on the last day of 2022. So I'm gonna tell you the first thing, cause it was in the morning. I don't need to read this. I'm, I mean, I have my notes in front of me, but anyway, it was in the morning and I have my favorite Starbucks that I often go to, not every day, I, cause I make great coffee here, but I love the hot chocolate at Starbucks. It's my, it's my one, you know, special thing. So I went over there for uh, my last hot chocolate of 2022 and uh, it was gray and rainy and I'm standing, uh, it's not a long line at all. There's one woman in front of me and she's, oh, maybe an inch taller than me and looks in the realm of my age. And I'm just noticing, wow, that it, she looks really cool. I mean, she was very casual looking, but um, I loved her jacket and I just went, God, I love her shoes, I love her pants, I love her jacket, I love her hair. And she was all real casual. So I was just kind of admiring her from, the side and she kind of turned to me and she had a really beautiful smile warm smile and i think she said something to me i don't remember what it was but that was my opportunity and i said by the way i love your jacket and she she rolled her eyes and said you know i haven't even had my coffee today and i just threw on anything i said well you did really good because I love that jacket. And um, and she said, my husband is walking around in the rain waiting for me to get this cup of coffee. And I, so then now we're chatting a little bit and I said, well, you know, coffee always tastes better when it's raining. And she said, it does. And um, we just sort of did the little, nice meeting you, happy new year, kind of fist pump, real warm. I can't tell you, she had a, a, a smile that just kind of lit up the universe. It was incredibly warm. And um, she starts to walk away and she stops just a couple of feet from me, just a couple of, and she turns to me and she goes, you know, I mean, she really did. She got really close to me and she said, 
I raised my children to appreciate the little things. And I said, well, that's my philosophy. That's my philosophy. And we both kind of stared at each other. And then I said, in fact, I have a book coming out in the spring called What is Good Evidence? And she said, get out. <laughs> It was really funny. I said, yeah, look for it. What is good evidence? Because good evidence is exactly what happened right here this morning. Simple connection. And we just, it was very special. Um, and she said, it's always the small things. That's the quote for the day given to me by this stranger who I hope I run into again. I would never forget her. It's always the small things. She taught her children that. I, well, that was my first experience of the day, and it was very validating. Um, and I thought she was kind of an angel, uh, validating my philosophy, validating the book coming out. Um, we were kindred spirits. However we knew each other, um, we were kindred spirits. All right. So now we go into the evening where it's uh, New Year's Eve and it's raining oh my god it's miserable and i had no plans to go out i just wanted to eat and watch movies and talk to a couple of friends and blah blah, blah. so i'm home and i'm cozy and it's raining outside and uh, a very good friend of mine is on the east coast this is three hours later so we're talking you know we're texting and stuff like that and uh she's on a road trip so about two or three weeks ago uh when I had the trauma of the uh, author refusing to pay me for my work and cheating me out of a thousand dollars, I, you know, I, I, I wasn't on YouTube for those three weeks that much because I had so much work to do and focusing. So I lost, I lost um, some, I, I lost some subscribers. Uh, which I thought I didn't, but I did. It kind of fell off a little bit. And um, I was just feeling kind of bad, you know? And I was talking to my friend and she said, well, I can't, it's, she swore, so I don't want to swear and, and lose YouTube. So she said, um, ignore the numbers, ignore the numbers, but she didn't say ignore. Um, the word she said started with an F, like uh, the name Frank, okay? Uh, or fudge. Um, she said, fudge the numbers. And I went, you know, I like that. I'm just going to kind of take that on. So I hadn't really been paying attention to uh, my subscribers. And one day I went, oh, I got another subscriber. That's nice. But on New Year's Eve, <laughs> about nine o'clock my time, I opened up my computer and I went into my left ear and all of a sudden, I'm going, no, you're kidding me. All of a sudden, I have 5,000 sus subscribers. Now, if you compare this to some of the other people on YouTube, it's nothing. But to me, I've been waiting over two years to get 5,000. And uh, I haven't really made big marketing efforts. I haven't reached out to a lot of other readers. Um, so I've been largely on my own here, although I've, 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 uh, uh, I've had, I've shared screen with a few people. Um, and I just was, that this would happen right before midnight when I had never gotten to this number. I had never gotten to this number. I just thought, well, I kind of like the way that it feels for 2023. So those are my two good evidence pieces. And now uh, it keeps growing. It's going up a little bit more. The only thing I can think of is that one day I went on uh, Instagram and I had mistakenly taken a photo of myself, a still photo, right before I did a video. And I kind of like the photo. So I posted the photo on Instagram of me. And I don't post a lot of pictures of me on Instagram, although people love it. I get my most hits when I post photos of me, but I don't like to be that person that does that. Um, so I posted this picture 
and I wrote in that top part, um, I'm just getting ready to uh, shoot a video for my YouTube site, Carrie Freeman, My Left Ear. I think maybe some people on Instagram saw that and went over to My Left Ear and signed up. That's, you know, but however it happened, it was just the coolest thing. All right, now we're gonna go into some politics. I'm gonna be like a little selfish here because I'm fascinated by this, um, this, uh, what do you call him? <laughs> a um, imposter named uh, George Santos or Soros. Is it Santos or Soros? Now I'm Santos, Santos, George Santos. Uh, because he's getting into, he got elected in some district in New York. I'm not sure, it wasn't your normal election, but he got in there and he's a Republican and he's on the young side. I don't mean really young, but I don't know, maybe maybe 40. Uh, uh, and he's not who he says he is. Um, everything that's on his resume, every job, every where he studied, his degrees, none of it's true, they're finding out, but he's being, he's being sworn in to Congress. And he has committed to voting for Kevin McCarthy. So this means probably nothing's gonna happen to the guy until he gets his vote in for Kevin McCarthy. But I just wanna share some of these things with you. So this print is a little bit small. Um, Brian Taylor Cohn, who's got over a million people on YouTube, is really great with the politics. Um, he found all these aliases for um, George. Uh, here are the aliases. George DeVolder, Anthony Santos, Anthony DeVolde, Andre Dos Santos, and Anthony Zebrowski. These are all aliases that this guy has used, okay? Um, then I find out, or we, not just me, but as I'm doing my reading and all that, um, he is being bankrolled by a Russian oligarch that is funneling the money through an American, not directly to him. So that's going on. Uh, but here's, here's what's really cool. New York Attorney General Tish James, uh, who has nailed Trump, is investigating him, he, investigating him for criminal activity, which probably is going to point to uh, this um, Russian oligarch or laundering, um, false claims, taxes. Uh, so there we go. Um, he lied and he, when he said he went to Horace Mann in uh, New York University, worked at Goldman Sachs, Citigroup. He said he is um, part Jewish and he calls himself Jew-ish. Um, had claimed he had grandparents who fled the Holocaust, which is unbelievably insensitive and cruel. Unbelievable. Um, he has claimed that he's half black. Um, he's claimed that his mother was Brazilian. Um, he's claimed that he's a white man from Belgium. Um, Belgium. So in Congress, he'll have access to national security. Um, now, my left ear, because I don't think anything's gonna stop him right now for getting um, sworn into office. Nope, I don't think so. He's gonna get sworn into office. But here's what my left ear told me. And um, if you're new here, my left ear represents <laughs> that I literally get information through my left ear. I get told things like last week, I didn't put it on my YouTube, I didn't want to, but I was clearly told there would be violence in Times Square. 
clearly, and it kept coming up over and over, and I'm like, oh, so I want to be wrong. Fortunately, nobody died, but there was violence. There was a guy with a machete, a machete, who went after two or three policemen's policemen. Uh, two were injured. Nobody died. Um, the assault, the man who created the assault uh, got shot in the shoulder, staying in the hospital. He's alive, and they think he might be a jihadist, but it just came in like, uh-oh, there's probably going to be, um, as good as the security is, there's probably going to be some violence and it really worried me. And then I, and then I was right. So this is what happens when I say my left ear, it's because I'm getting information. Okay. Uh, I believe more my left ear that, um, he will be arrested and indicted by feds after he is inducted into Congress. And so I threw some runes, and then I'll get off it. Uh, will George Soros Santos be gone from Congress in six months? I got, uh, the first rune I got was the gateway reversed, reversed. And the gateway reverse always says there's a quickening of intensity, and that will be the investigation into him, and his development. It's, everything's heating up. Um, he's undergoing difficulties. Uh, now, the runes say, you may be undergoing difficulties, so I'm saying he because this is about him. Um, but the passage depends on your attitude, George, or whoever you are. Gateway reverse demands contemplation. Impulses must be tempered. Uh, then I went to the second rune, which was harvest. And harvest is a fertile season. Um, there are no quick results with harvest, and it can be up to one year. So the six months may not be correct, but it could be within six months. It could. But harvest does indicate between now and a year. And we're seeing that justice is very, very slow. Um, and our patience for this is essential. Um, and, and, and if he's pulled out of Congress or arrested or whatever, they have to have, um, the governor of New York does not assign, uh, the next Congress person. There's a vote in that district. All right. So I want to look. Then I got movement reversed. All right. Uh, this is movement that is blocked and that is his movement. Okay. Not the feds, his movement. George's movement. And uh, the runes tell him, you need to recognize that not all possibilities are open to you, sir. And the runes recommend him avoiding further actions. It, it doesn't look good for him, but he's going to get a running start and it's going to be painful because, you know, he reminds me, uh, like, Catch Me If You Can, that great movie that Steven Spielberg did about Frank Abag. Abagnale, Abagnale, I can't say his name, it's Abag, Abagnale, Abagnale, Frank, Abagnale. Well, he was the subject, he's still alive, he was so brilliant, he was brought into the FBI, <laughs> and he's been with the FBI all these years, ever since he's been caught. And uh, I once saw a YouTube video of Frank, catch me if you can, now a mature man with children, grown children, talking about his life. It was one of the most fascinating things I ever heard. He claimed, I'm really not that smart, but I'm telling you, really smart. The man passed the bar exam without going to law school. He flew planes, he worked in a hospital, but now he's with the FBI. Well, this is like a poor man's Frank Abnegale, okay? This George guy doesn't have the brains. Um, all right, I went on with the runes. Will Kevin McCarthy be the next speaker? All right, I just want to tell you, my left ear has doubts. Just without even throwing the runes, my left ear has doubts. I believe there's even a small mini caucus that wants to vote against him. But here's what I got. Um, I got wholeness. Uh, which is really positive, which is life force. And uh, the runes say that which our nature requires, wholeness. And it's an impulse towards self-realization. Uh, and I put a note in here, 
which McCarthy cannot achieve. He is not capable of self-realization. And I don't think there's anybody in the GOP uh, that is remaining. Um, and it indicates his ambition, this, this striving for the wholeness, the self-realization. It's like, uh, if I can just get to that, then I'll be great. Um, and it marks a time of regeneration down to the cellular level. Uh, and that may be due to losing the speaker. Uh, then I got flow, which is another positive. Stay with me. Flow is water, is that which conducts. And it talks about unseen powers at play here. Uh, it does speak to the satisfaction of emotional needs being met. It often signals a time of reorganization, revaluing, realigning. Um, and it does indicate the happy ending that Kevin desires. Stay with me. The, th the last rune I got was the rune of strength in the reversed position. And it says, Ralph Blum says, without ears to hear or eyes to see, you may fail to take advantage of the moment. This could be a missed opportunity or a vast weakening of your position. And to those who are deeply unconscious, which is Kevin McCarthy, it will serve as a shocking jolt. We will see. Um, he is not liked, but I tell you, um, there are people that think he, somehow he's just, he may get in there temporarily and not stay. That could have to do with the, genu the investigation. It's hard to say. Um, and someone else may step in. A shocking jolt. Okay, that was the last room for Kevin McCarthy. A shocking jolt. But he's making deals. And he's... Um, telling people you're going to be the head of this committee and you're going to be the head of this committee. And along those lines, let me tell you a story. Uh, representatives Jim Jordan and James Comer uh, made a ton of record requests to the White House uh, for all kinds of records, but they were denied because the requests lack constitutional authority. They had no authority to require to ask for these documents. And you know why? Because they aren't assigned to the committees yet. Because Kevin McCarthy is delaying making assignments. He's assuming he's gonna be speaker. And as speaker, the speaker can make assignments. You're the head of this committee, that committee. But they all made assumptions uh, because he's waiting to be appointed speaker. Um, the GOP caucus, they're not aligned, they're not coherent. There's no policies in place. All they want to do is get Hunter Biden and Joe Biden. But let me tell you what happened. White House Special Counsel uh, Richards, I don't know if his name is Richards. I'm not going to say his name because I don't want to get it wrong. But White House Special Counsel describes such requests as, un, un, as constitutionally illegitimate because both Jordan, both Jordan and this other guy made them before they had the authority to do that. And now when they go back and submit their requests again, it's gonna take months for them to receive the documents. So that's kind of fun. Now I'm gonna go through some tidbits. Just generally speaking, just an overall vibe, that 2023, even with what's going to go on in the in the, uh, the House of Representatives, 2023, generally speaking, will feel a little easier, just a little bit easier, a little more hopeful. And the reason, one of the reasons my left ear is saying this is because we are finally seeing movement. We are finally seeing some action going on. That's one of the reasons. Um, we've been, uh, what do they say, hamstrung? And now January 6th completed. It's brilliant what they did. There's, a, I think there's a, a website now where you can go and read everything. So that's the first thing. 
2023 will feel just a little easier. Uh, my left ear has uh, something to say about Clarence Thomas, that once the first indictment falls, uh, and that will probably be Trump, but when the first big indictment, it's going to start rolling indictments, okay? My left ear. And there, with the rolling indictments, there will be heat on Clarence Thomas. One thing that's interesting is that there is already, right now, a lot of heat on his wife, Ginny Thomas. Uh, if you watch the news, the MSNBC, you'll, you'll notice uh, a lot of people are talking about her testimony, which is now, you can read it. And it's, my friends, it's a little batshit. I mean, this is a woman who's been in two cults now. She was in, um, I don't remember the, the name of the cult before. I actually had a friend who escaped from this cult that Ginny was in. And, and then we are to consider the GOP and this, this, this radical version a cult because they don't deal in science and they don't deal in facts, right? Um, anyway, I think the rolling indictments are gonna start at the end of January. Some people like uh, Midas Touch, love Midas Touch. Uh, he, Ben, my cellist, thinks it's uh, gonna be like more towards the spring and summer, we'll see. Rolling indictments and Clarence is gonna get pulled into that. And Ginny will too. Um, expect more heat on Ginny also. That's what I wanna say. My left ear, Russia is weakening, even though we have been seeing these hor horrendous strikes on Ukraine. Uh, it may not appear that way, but these are desperate strikes, uh, most likely, all the drones are from Iran. Uh, the winter has begun and Putin will not take good care of his troops. He never does. And they will weaken, they will die, they will starve and freeze. Um, I want to say, my left ear wants to say, expect Ukraine to prevail between June and December 23. Putin is fading. He's currently hiding a lot. He's opting out of activities that he used to love, like like an annual hockey game. And um, my left ear, you know, thinks his health is seriously failing too. Um, per NBC, the probe into the deleted Secret Service text message scandal is now officially a criminal investigation. Um, now through this, I found out, and it feels logical to me, but I just didn't know this, and maybe you don't either, that the vast majority of intelligence, CIA, FBI, Secret Service are largely conservatives. Um, they need to be vetted now. There needs to be a system of vetting and maybe even rethinking the training of these people because a number of them, I don't wanna say a lot because I don't know how many, but a number of them got corrupted, uh, allowed themselves to be corrupted. Um, these are all adults that had choices, you know. They weren't like little children who have no choices. They allowed themselves to be corrupted. Maybe they already were, and Trump gave permission. But I just wanted to share this with you. They're largely conservatives. Makes sense to me. Um, I have a last one here I want, I want to share with you, but one more. Uh, in terms of the IRS and Trump's taxes, and Trump's basically being the only president that's never been audited, uh, Obama was audited every year. Biden's been audited. I mean, they've all been audited, but not Trump. And I would imagine um, Mnuchin had something to do with protecting him. Um, but the, his taxes now, which are evident for everybody to see, largely fraudulent, 
um, de deductions, very spurious deductions, very unclear donations, very questionable, no paperwork. Now, Congress won't investigate this. And I think it's a little bit old news right now. It's not the most critical thing at the moment. It's just more outrageousness. But isn't it interesting that Trump was not audited, but James Comey was audited and Jim McCabe, uh, Andrew McCabe, Andrew McCabe uh, from the FBI. And uh, the, the IRS is saying, no, that was random. No, it wasn't random, my friends. It was not random, my friends. Uh, like a mafia boss, Trump, Trump wanted to get revenge on these guys from the FBI. So this was crooked and the IRS needs to be investigated. The head of the IRS, get him out of there. Um, he's, uh, he's crummy, he's bad. Um, so I just wanna share this thing with you. My left ear, this has been going on for a while. I keep having an experience of waking up to breaking news that Donald Trump has collapsed and died. Uh, this has come in more than once. Uh, so I just wanna share that with you because when things come in more than once, I'm like, huh, that's interesting. And like many, I don't really like to talk about um, people dying, but I consider Donald J. Trump one of the most evil, frightening, horrific things that has ever happened to the United States. And I don't, I don't care if he dies. I'm so sorry to say that. I, I really don't. Um, when one person is destroying so much, they have to go. It's that simple. They have to go. Um, so we'll see, but I just wanted to share it with you. And uh, I lost my document of quotes that I've been keeping for like 20 years. I, ha I have to keep looking for it. I don't know how this happened. It's pretty traumatic. I found a form of my quotes, but not all the recent ones I've been um, accumulating. So wish me luck here. So I'm just gonna leave this with you um, per the story at the beginning, it's always the small things. It's always the small things. Or it is a lot of the time. Um, so there you go. Happy New Year. I'm going to be back with uh, Writer Beware Part 2. And I'm going to be back with more Patreon. I think we have four more runes. And that's it for now. Happy New Year. Enjoy this first Monday of this new year and um, make peace, make good memories. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.